Hi there, everyone. Lars here with another D&D discussion brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And in today's discussion, I want to talk about character voice. This is an aspect of role-playing that not everyone really gets into, in part because it can be pretty embarrassing to go on out there, and not everyone wants to get this deep into their character. And some people feel a little bit inadequate, especially if they've watched something like Critical Role and seen professional voice actors do incredible voices for their characters. But in all honesty, I think that it genuinely helps you as a player and also as a writer to really get into the voice of your characters. And what I mean here is this. When you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, think about the characters that you are embodying, whether you are a player or the Dungeon Master. You don't need to come up with a fancy accent for every single character and that can get <laughs> that can really bog you down real fast but it gets so much fun to think about who is my character is my character just like some cowboy coming on in here and he's going to pull out his sword or pull out a gun and he's going to just wreck this place and get himself a drink uh and knowing uh, knowing the personality brings out the voice, and then trying to capture that voice helps you to stay in character. Or is your character the brilliant aristocrat, very talented, very snooty, and obviously compensating for many, many lacks of virtue and character? Uh, d doing that is fun. Or is your character really young and naive? Maybe dropping it a little octave, which is really hard for me to do because I'm a bass. <laughs> Figuring out your character is absolutely essential. Their personality, their background, where they come from, and then embodying that in the way that they speak. And when we think about it, this is just the way that things go in normal life. I spent a lot of time in Germany, and people here in the States always love to make fun of Germans for just having this really harsh sounding accent. And the thing is this, is that if you spend enough time with Germans, and especially in different regions of Germany, you'll realize that they have very different accents, very different dialects, and that they sound very unique. Also, while the German language is a harsher language, it's also really beautiful. People like to say, oh, Schmetterling, which is the word for butterfly. However, if you hear a German normally say the word Schmetterling, that's the way it comes out. Sure, it's a little bit harsher, but most Germans don't throw in this horrible accent and harshness to every single word that they say. And in some regions, like I lived in Bavaria for a long time, Bavarians have a very warm, warm, warm kind of way of speaking and it becomes somewhat musical it's really interesting to listen to Bavarian speak because they're actually a musical people when they start talking and their language is a very beautiful rolling one it's not harsh and that tells you a lot about these people that they're the way that they're very laid back the Bavarians are very laid back they are a very open culture and it makes people think that they're dumb which then when a Bavarian starts saying very intelligent things you're like whoa that caught me off guard. I thought you were just a country bumpkin. And already right there, the voice and the words that are used helps to tell you a lot about a character. Now, I know I delved a little bit right there into the real world stuff, so let's think about a character that you might be able to shape. Let's say you want to play a drunken master, a drunken monk. Also, then you're like, oh, I'm going to slur my words a little bit. I'm going to, woo, uh, sorry about, oh, I've got a headache. It just, Different kinds of things. Whatever you've seen people do when they're drunk or getting, or trying to overcome a hangover or your own personal experiences with that, you can embody that and be like, okay then, so this is what a character is going to sound like when they're drunk or when they're trying to overcome a hangover. Now then, they are a wizened master. So what are some things that I can then throw on out there? What are some things that I can say that go with this just, oh man, kind of a voice right here. Like, ugh, don't count all of your eggs before they've hatched <laughs> and then someone be all like don't you mean chickens sir yeah yeah i mean that oh. can, can someone please give me some water staff of life right there oh ooh, i feel so much better it tells you a little bit about this character this is a character who who gets drunk and that should that's that's a definitely a character weakness it's a flaw something that they need to overcome but there is some wisdom and intelligence there and maybe then that might actually tell you a little bit about how you should play that character what their arc should be maybe they need to overcome their alcoholism or 
cut it back a little bit right here. Or maybe there's something that they need to teach to the other members of the party, and what's holding them back is just their attitude. They need to find a better way of communicating. And that is the power of character voice. Voice communicates culture. It communicates intelligence. It communicates personality. It communicates history. Now, that might sound really high and complex, and for new players, it might be like, Lars, that's a little bit too much. Don't worry, don't worry. That's all stuff that you actually discover as you're creating the character and as you're playing them. It's not something that you need to have right off the bat. Instead, come up with your character, think about who he or she or they are, and then think about what would they sound like. In one of the campaigns that I'm right now leading, um, our dear friend of the channel here, Zaza, uh, from Zaza Inc., definitely check out their channel, I will have a link for their channel, uh, is playing a kinku, and a kinku who has learned to really communicate without just simply mimicking other people. And it's so much fun how Zaza plays this kinku by really trying to make them sound like a crow and an intelligent crow at that because, well, crows actually are really intelligent. So bringing out that speak, bringing out those crow mannerisms and the history and the personality, it is so much fun. And then other people who are playing it, you've got Scott who's playing uh Lennox, this uh, this uh, <laughs> angry little bunny boy uh, who doesn't have a whole lot to say. And it's fantastic how much can be said by a character who doesn't say much because Lennox weighs his words before saying them. And that comes through with the voice, with the tone that Scott gives to Lennox. Very clipped, very short. And so then when Lennox opens up and you get to hear that, it's a very impressive moment. And then for our friend Danielle, who is playing this aristocratic... Uh, Asimer, who who is on her own uh, specific unique quest because she's so sophisticated and has been well traveled, it is fun to hear her change her tone depending on which character she's interacting with because she is trying to manipulate all of these different people in order to get what she wants. It makes it a whole lot of fun and you can tell a lot about these characters just based on their voice and by them really trying to stick to that voice it helps them to stay in character and that's something that's very very important when it comes to role playing you want to be able to stay in character now how this can be applied to writing is fairly simple fairly straightforward it is so so easy when writing characters to make them all sound alike way too easy and it gets very embarrassing when two completely different characters sound exactly alike and people are then like is that all you can write can you write just clones of one character you want to be able to do better than that you want people to be able to very clearly identify who is who by how they speak and so think about the characters that you write what are their personalities where do they come from what's their background and by understanding that you can then craft really good dialogue for all of these different characters some characters will use big fancy words other characters will try to sound very sophisticated but with without the big fancy words some characters are going to be very crass some are going to be very straightforward some are going to be very soft spoken and use vocabulary that matches that some are going to be posers and they're going to use words wrong and that can be really frustrating and really funny to read understanding how characters speak can help you solidify their personality. And by holding true to that, there might be times where you're all like, hmm, I want this character to do this, but by remembering their voice, by remembering their personality, you will be able to better determine, okay, my character would actually do this in this kind of a situation, so that way you're not making them do anything that is widely outside of that character. Because if you do that, it's shocking to the audience. It can be fun to do once or twice, depending on the situation, but if it's something that happens again and again and again, people are going to be wondering, do I even understand this character? And now, do I even care? And they will not be as invested in your story and your characters as you want them to be. So again, my advice is this. Think about who your characters are. Where do they come from? What is their history? What is their education? How does this all play into an accent, into their word choice, and how they speak with others? And take some time. You don't, again, have to adopt some crazy accent when you're role-playing. You don't have to do that. But think about how your character would actually speak. Practice it. Talk with the other players there at the table. Talk with the dungeon master. And explore that. If you're the dungeon master, 
don't worry about having a unique accent for every single character. Just think about who your major NPCs are, give them a personality, give them a unique voice, a unique way of speaking, and you will discover who they are as you interact with the players. And that is something that I think is very, very crucial, very, very critical. You don't have to have everything figured out right off the bat. You are going to discover these characters as you play them. But do have enough so that way you have a starting point and you can already then play as that character and then discover more about them as you play. Remember, D&D is a shared storytelling experience. And so you work it all out together. And the best conversations, the best character interactions are when the players and the dungeon master honestly just have some fun talking with NPCs, messing around, doing their own little fun thing. It's not always about the action. It's not always about the quest. It's not always about the dungeon crawling. Those are great action-filled moments, but those are made even better by the character interactions where you get to know who these people are. That is what makes a story. A story lives or dies by its characters. And a campaign lives or dies by how well you know your character and how well your character knows the other players and characters at the table. So those are my insights. That's my writing advice from my own experiences playing Dungeons and Dragons. Tell me about your experiences playing D&D. What things have you done for the voice of your character, for their personality? Have you tried using an accent? How many times did you break your accent? Believe you me, for one character, I was playing basically a Cajun pirate. I think his accent changed every other sentence. <laughs> So tell me about your experiences doing that. In the meantime, if you're looking for more writing advice, please check out our other videos here, or you can head on over to our podcast, Camille's Harem. You can also check out our uh, writing challenges over at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to join our ever-growing community of novice authors. And if you'd like to support us, please check out the books that we have published. Links for all of that and more are in the description below. And until the next video, y'all, have fun trying out different weird accents, and choose.